Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Today, I have a very special guest. Ken Atterd. He is the founder of Mindset Malta. After successfully working with various clients over the span of 15 years, Ken now specializes as a mindset consultant, specifically helping frustrated entrepreneurs to adapt and pivot using his proprietary ARC method, allowing them to have more free time guaranteed. And who, who wouldn't want more of that? Ken brings to the stage his personal experience, not only as a mindset consultant, but also as an entrepreneur, father, and human being like the rest of us on this planet. He has a firm belief that life is not meant to be difficult for a continuous struggle, but it's meant to be fun and flowing, full of new experiences that are fruitful, abundant, inspiring. Ken, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Lance. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Super excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's kick things off by uh, tell us, you know, before we get into exactly what you do with the mindset, stuff. Yeah. Tell, tell us how you got here. Did you grow up in a family of entrepreneurs or was it quite the opposite? Uh, no, I did not grow up in a family of entrepreneurs. Yet, fortunately, I was very fortunate that uh, my parents, so my basically I'm based in the island of Malta, uh, bang in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Yet, if you might know from my accent, this is a Canadian accent. The reason is I was born in Canada mm. and uh, my parents had emigrated. Yeah. My parents had emigrated to Canada uh, were there for 16 years. Uh, I came back to Malta when I was 14. So uh, no, it wasn't entrepreneur far from it. My dad was a, was a factory worker there and my mom was worked in a hospital as a stenographer. Yet uh, when I look back uh, sp- specifically my mom, uh, very open-minded to new ideas, new concepts. Um, and, and every time I came to her with some sort of idea or anything like that, she was very, very open to it. So definitely not a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm sure if I look down the line somewhere, my grandfather mm-hmm. way back, <laughs> way, way, way back, uh, had a barber shop and was somewhat of an entrepreneur, if you would like to call it at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wouldn't say I would grew up amongst entrepreneurs far from it. Yeah, and, fair enough. And, yeah. Do you, do you think, do you think the reason why I ask that question is sometimes people are like carrying on the family business, but I found that it seems like people who kind of grow up in the opposite, basically, you know, what you're describing and I'm much the same, you know, my mom, my mother and father worked for other folks and I saw the freedom that uh, entrepreneurship can, can give, can give to people. So, you know, that, that, that's where I was coming from with that. And maybe much is the same for you. I don't know. Well, uh, absolutely. I think I think if I look back uh, in my uh, my childhood, I, I always had this, let's say, this dream of um, of, of having something that was my own. Um, uh, and and, I, and one of my grandfathers, actually, another grandfather, I'm just remembering now as you're speaking, was actually a businessman as well. So there may have been some influence there, but I, I think it was mostly I just felt like I wanted something on my own. It doesn't mean I started off that way. Um, I was a banker. Um, mm. I've worked in I've worked in a clothes factory. Uh, yet at some point, I just knew there was there was there was more to do. And it was only when I really started to delve into personal development um, uh, through at the time network marketing or multi level marketing, as many people know, mm-hmm. um, where where I started to delve into personal development, where I started to realize, hey. I can have a little more control here, you know, I can have a little more and there's a lot more that I can achieve rather than just, let's say, getting by, just getting through life like many people do. It's it's interesting how so many people will come up with the comment, you know, oh, life just gets in the way, um, you know, and 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 essentially they're saying that it's not their fault. And I and I understand that there are circumstances, situations that um, sometimes are not pretty yet. Uh, they just don't know yet that they actually, you know, their control on the way they're thinking and their response to their circumstances is having a tremendous impact on the results and the experiences that they're having in their life. And the great thing about entrepreneurship, what I, I was just mentioning this to someone today, is that there's always, as, me, as much as there is responsibility and risk, if you'd like to call it, Mm-hmm. There's always the potential for so much more than when 
you are, in, and again, with the utmost respect, I say this because there's nothing wrong in having a nine to five job. Sure. Far from it. Far from it. It's very, very respectful. Yet there is a certain amount of limitation. You know, you're taking so much home with you at the end of the week or end of the month, whatever it is. Whereas with entrepreneurship, what I truly love about it is that there's that potential for so much more and, and so much more expansion as well. Yeah, I would agree with you. I, I, I'm, a, I'm of the mindset. So we, while we get into that, I'm of the mindset of a life of abundance and that there's, Absolutely. you know, we live in an infinite universe. This idea of scarcity is just not the way to live. And I think <laughs> entrepreneurship exactly does that. So let's, let's jump into that. How would you define mindset? How would I define mindset? Really simply put, I like to say this. Um, is is that the experiences and the results that you are having in your life are the byproduct, are the byproduct of the way you are thinking, your mindset. So so it's not a matter of chasing, you know, the end result, or you know. So so let's give a, a let's use a concrete example that everybody can understand. It's not about chasing the money. It's about understanding that the money, the result, the experience is a byproduct of the way you're thinking. So when you can actually look at the results in your life, and this is absolutely vital for anybody to be honest with themselves, you got to start by on being honest with yourself and saying, you know, this is where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Am I happy with this or am I not happy with this? And being honest with yourself and saying, okay, I'm not quite happy with this area of my life. And let's take health. And, you know, I'm not happy with my health. Well, how am I at this point? Where So these are the results, the experience that I'm having in my life. Now, if thoughts create ultimately the experiences and the results you're having, I need to go back and look at what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking, my mindset. Because ultimately, and then your thoughts are connected with your beliefs. Now, those beliefs may have been, again, passed down by our parents by our teachers, by the people we've been surrounding ourselves around. And most of them have really good intentions. There's no malintentions. You know, my parents didn't have malintentions and with, with what they were passing, they were passing down what they knew. See, and this is what's so interesting is that people are doing the best that they can do with what they have right now. So in a nutshell, mindset, the way you're thinking is going to create an emotion. And I love simplicity. I really, truly love simplicity because that's another thing where people get caught up in mindset. Even entrepreneurs, there are many that are totally unaware of the way they're thinking. Mm -hmm. They have no clue of how the process works. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, you don't know. They're just so unaware of it. And the, the thing that they're most unaware of is how powerful it is. So simply speaking, your thoughts are creating an emotion. It's either creating, and to make it simple, a good feeling emotion a bad feeling emotion, depending on what that emotion is, is now affecting the actions you're taking or your behaviors. And depending on those actions and behaviors, that's going to have an outcome on the results and the experiences. Feel good. You're probably going to take an action or have a behavior that's going to be move, moving you forward. You're feeling really good. You're feeling strong. No problem. Up, out. Went to the gym, did a workout, result, you're feeling really great to make it really simple. Mm -hmm. Not feeling so good, I don't think I'm going to get up off the couch. I don't feel like going to the gym. But different, different action, different behavior, different result, different experience. Do that in have, a nutshell to me is mindset. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a beautiful explanation of it, um, especially with how you kind of took it full circle. You know, if you're, if you're starting with recognizing basically the truth, where you're at with your mindset, and then how that can lead to a physical outcome, right? Um, what do you tell people, what is your strategy for if, if people have, you know, the thoughts that are leading them towards a, towards a negative outcome potentially and, and avoiding that? I, I, I guess what I'm starting to think about as you were saying that was, it reminds me of meditation. So in meditation, one of the, one of the ideas is, yes, you're going to have these bad thoughts come in, but you acknowledge them and then they go away. That's how it's worked for mm -hmm. me. Is anything much the same in the way you coach? Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, meditation does come into it. I like to call it because again, this is, it's so funny, but a lot of people, the minute you mention meditation, mm -hmm. it's sort of, they, they potentially could be put off only because that's their perception of it. 
and 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 what they think it is. Um, so a lot of times I just like to call it quiet time. Mm. It's just just a bit of quiet time, and that could that could be simply you know you just sitting in your room quiet, you know no interruptions, no internet, no you know no children, no spouse, but just a little bit of quiet time on your own. And sometimes that's just a matter of five minutes. It's simply to, as you're saying, it's really to just slow down your mind a bit. Because people have, you know, they're, they're thinking, constantly thinking. It allows them to come to the, the, the present moment, if you like to call it. Because most people are caught up in thinking about what's coming in the future mm-hmm. or what they think is coming in the future. Also, many are caught up in thinking about the past and what's happened, potentially having regrets and why didn't I do this? And, why did, and the fact is, you're here now. The way I like to explain this is very simply... I heard this a little while ago. It was Eckhart Tolle, I believe I, I, I had heard, hmm. um, and to give credit to that, is that, you know, a lot of people get caught up, you know, what's my purpose in life and all this thing. And simply put, right now, in this specific moment, my purpose is to have this conversation with you, Lance. This is my entire purpose of my life right now, mm-hmm. to be fully present, to be focused, so that I can offer the best that I can of myself to all those who are listening. That's my purpose. When I move from here to the next thing, that will now be my purpose, potentially sitting down with your child and being fully present, not so caught up in, you know, I need to be doing this and I need to be doing this and I need to just being fully present at whatever you're doing. And when it comes to coming back to meditation, for instance, one of the things that I'd love to start with with most people, just to make it really simple, again, is start your day off with some appreciation. Gratitude. Just start the day with appreciation. Have a journal where you just thought, jot, start jotting down what you could be appreciative of. And you'd be surprised at how much you can. Even it's the most simple thing. Just be very grateful for the bed you slept on last night. Mm-hmm. Some people didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Be very grateful the fact that you have food in the fridge, that you have running water. They're grateful that you know you have a bathroom to use. They're grateful, you know, this is just top of my head, you know, and the great, I'm very grateful for the glasses I have on my head right now because I can see my screen clearly. <laughs> so just yeah. being very, appre- just being very appreciative of technology, you know, and, and where it's taking us. So starting my day, and I say starting the day off. Now it doesn't matter. You can be appreciative whenever you want, but starting the day off like that, it sort of like sets the tone for the day. So if I've started the day off with appreciation, So I've set the tone off with appreciation. Now, again, if we're going to delve a little more into mindset, again, what a lot of people are unaware of is that you are literally emitting a frequency into, let's call it whatever you'd like, the universe, the quantum field, the Mm -hmm. field, source, source energy, God, Bob, Bill, Jane, call it whatever you like. It's a name. It doesn't matter, but it's an energy. You're, You're emitting that frequency. Yep. Now, you can only receive back to you according to what you are emitting. So if I started the tone of the day with the frequency of appreciation and set that out, I'm literally opening the doors to receive more things to be appreciative of throughout the day. I'm, I'm opening up that door versus opening the open, you know, starting the day off, you know, right away, bang into emails. Oh, there's an email that's upset me. Now Mm -hmm. I'm angry. I need, I know I need to do this. And what am I emitting? So that's one real simple way that people can just start their day off like that and start it off on a great tone. And again, it goes back to, you know, some people say, you know, they get out of bed and they, and and they, they understand something went wrong. They stubbed their toe, you know, and they say, Oh, it's going to be one of those days. That's what you're creating. If you've decided it's going to be one of those days, it is. So decide that it's going to be an appreciative day. Yeah, I like and that approach. Take it from because, there. Yeah, I like that approach because it's proactive and not reactive. And it, it, yeah. you're, you're in much more control when you're proactive, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get into some specifics. How specifically can an entrepreneur who's listening to this podcast benefit from the mind, mindset consulting um, that you offer? And maybe you could even give us some examples, some specific examples without naming names. Well, absolutely. Like, you know, one of the, one of the main focuses for me is this, is that I guarantee people that they can have more time freedom. I think one of, there's a cup, there's so many benefits that an entrepreneur can have as any person could have, 
you know, amazingly, we have, we have so much information available to us nowadays. Like I can have, you can have more of information available to you in one day than my grandparents could have had available to them in a lifetime. It's so available. And so many entrepreneurs have heard about mindset and thought, you know, maybe I'll dabble into it. And, and there's something that I call the triple U syndrome that many suffer from. What do I mean by the triple U syndrome? The U being the letter U. The first U of the triple U syndrome is mindset is underrated. If you knew how powerful your mind was, you would not underrate it that much. Yeah. People, entrepreneurs hear about mindset and they say, oh, that's really interesting. That was an interesting talk. Uh, I heard the speaker speak. That looks, I think I'll dabble into it. And they'll dabble into it for a day or two, a week. And that's it. And it dwindles. It's sort of like they put it on the back burner. One day I'll get to it. The second you is underestimated. They underestimate their mindset and how powerful it is. And again, they just leave it on the back burner. No different than buying a book and leaving it on the shelf and never reading it. Have you ever done that? I know I've done that. I had a book, just put it on the shelf, didn't read it. It's, it's available to me. I just have to pick it up off the shelf, just like information about mindset and what you can do. And the third one is because of that, it's underutilized. It is just underutilized. So, you know, how, you know, how can mindset play an important part in an entrepreneur's life? Well, one of the first things that I find with entrepreneurs is that many of them are, have gone down a rabbit hole and they're so lost in their business and it's taking up so much of their time that one of the reasons they started their business was probably to have more freedom. Yet they have found themselves having less freedom. So one of the things I love to work with with entrepreneurs is actually for them to able, be able to find more time freedom. That's what I guarantee that they will have more time through freedom when they come through the program. Think of this. Um, I did an interesting exercise not long ago. And I said, you know, if you had one hour extra a day for yourself, mm. just one hour extra a day for yourself, that is the equivalent of 365 hours in a year. That is the equivalent. Now be ready for this. Okay. That is the equivalent of 42 eight-hour days. Mm. 42 eight-hour days. Now ask any entrepreneur to take 42 days off and they'll tell you, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. There's no way I can afford to take 42 days off. Yet you probably could afford to take one hour extra a day for yourself, whether that was for meditation, whether that was partly for meditation, partly for exercise, partly for family time, whatever it is, whatever it is, just one hour a day. And that's, you know, as soon as they start to realize that and you break that down, they go, Ooh, you know, this, this is a possibility. And I think this is absolutely vital for entrepreneurs to understand is that you going fast does not mean that you're being more efficient in your business. Right. There are plenty of people, of entrepreneurs, being what I call busy doing nothing. Mm -hmm. We hear about action, 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 action. Wherever you are in the entrepreneur world, you hear about, oh, you got to take action, you got to take action. And I'm not disagreeing, far from it. Yet what I have discovered is that there's a huge difference between taking action and taking inspired action. And inspired action will only come when you actually find time to slow down. So as you are writing in your appreciation journal and just slowing down a bit, a fantastic idea pops into your head. Because you slowed down enough to allow that idea to enter. You're tapping into an energy much yeah. greater than you. That's why you could be potentially some people are just taking a shower at the end of a difficult day, maybe. All right. And, and boom, a, 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 a solution pops into your head. Why? Because you just slow down enough mm -hmm. to allow it to enter. And so many entrepreneurs don't know this. So it's all about going, 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 going. So one of the first things that I have to do with many entrepreneurs is actually get them slow down. And I've had entrepreneurs, like I said, going through my program where, you know, now, all of a sudden, they're not worrying as much. They're starting to trust more. They're, and they're actually having time for themselves and, you know, going out for a walk and, 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 you know, switching off their technology for a full day. 
You know, I tell them, take an, take an electronic free day. Just one day. And the great thing about it is they realize they really didn't miss out on much. <laughs> there was nothing so grave happening or, or bad happening or so urgent happening that was detrimental. So this is one of the things that I think is extremely power, powerful for, for entrepreneurs without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. If you aren't doing, if you're an entrepreneur listening to this podcast and you aren't gaining more freedom in what you're doing, you're absolutely doing it wrong. And I, I think you do need to re-examine it because that, that is one of the biggest, I, I can't name all the parts of, you know, the benefits of being an entrepreneur right offhand, but that is certainly one big one is, is gaining some semblance of freedom, um, you know, through your prosperity. So um, what can all entrepreneurs um, benefit from shifting the way they think? Like, is there any cases where just a negative. Is there anybody that you haven't, that you tried to work with that, that didn't benefit? I mean, the, the only, the only, the only person that would not benefit mm -hmm. is someone that is not willing. It's as simple as that. And it's like, even when I'm going to work with someone, I have to see that they're actually willing that it's a match because it's useless for me to, let's say, give you information and say, listen, you know, you know, let's start off with doing an appreciation journal. And then I'm talking to, a week later, and you just haven't 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 started to do what work is necessary. So the only person that wouldn't benefit is someone who's not willing, or, or doesn't have an open mind enough, or the willingness to actually you know go forward with it and say, listen, you know what, you know what I like to tell people is just like, you know, because there are people who resist it. Like ultimately, what I'm saying many times is so contradictory to what so many people have learned. Sure. Like so many, so many, and this is what I love to, for instance, even when it comes to businesses, most entrepreneurs are taught you need to be suffering in one way or another. You need to be struggling in one way or another. You need to be sacrificing in one way or another. Now that's become so ingrained that struggle, sacrifice, suffering becomes equivalent to success. So unconsciously, if I'm not struggling, if I'm not suffering, if if, if, the e if the going is somewhat easy, all of mm. a sudden I'm feeling guilty. <laughs> Why aren't I struggling and suffering? It's, this is the way business is supposed to be. So that, this is why I say, I, say, I say, listen, what if your business could be fun? What if your business can be fulfilling? What if it can be inspirational? What if it could be easy? And it's a bit contradictory. So some people will give me resistance. Some entrepreneurs will give me resistance. No, it has to be a struggle. Yeah. There's no way there's going to, well, I'm not saying you're not going to have your challenges. You will have challenges and that's where you'll have your growth as well. But if you're willing to actually look at it, I say, okay, so what you're doing right now, how's that working for you? And if it's not working for you, well, what have you got to lose to attempt to start to shift, to begin to start to shift? What have you got to lose? If what you're doing isn't working, you're just going to keep on creating the same. Bingo. So ultimately, it, it, mindset is is what every person has available to them. It's not, and it's not rocket science. And you can start to see shifts very quickly. You can start to see <clears throat> results very quickly. Yet, like anything else, like anywhere that anybody's ever had success, I can guarantee you that they've had to be consistent in one way or another. So you had health success, you were being consistent with what you were doing with regards to your health. You had relationship success, you were being consistent with whatever you were doing with your relationships. So, so same thing when it comes to mindset, it's about being consistent. You be consistent, and this is why it needs to be top of mind almost every day, so that you get to a point where it just becomes unconscious competence. It becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. It's just what you do. You just wake up in the morning and put in your journal what you appreciate. You're stuck in traffic and you find the beauty of being stuck in traffic and find a way to make it work. And you find something to be appreciative of. What do you want to look at? What do you want to focus on in your life? Are you focusing? And this is how simple it is. Are you focusing on everything that's bad in your life? Or are you focusing on everything that's good in your life? And the more you shift the focus to what's good in your life, the more the bad, and there really isn't any bad, hmm. the more that bad dissipates. 
you just start to see more good. Yeah. Yeah. So it works for everyone. Right. And I think the law of attraction comes into play there a hundred percent. Exactly. The more you put out, the more you're going to, the more you're going to attract absolutely back in good. Right. Um, absolutely. Can, Ken, one, 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 one of the last questions I, I like to ask everybody that I interview here on this show is knowing what you ne- know now, and if you could go back in time when you first started um, what you do now, what is one piece of advice you'd give yourself? <laughs> one piece of advice I would give myself. Oh my God. I think I would. One piece of advice would have been to shut up more. <laughs> 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 and listen. And listen, and, and listen to what people are saying, and 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 uh, that probably would be one piece of advice that I would give my my younger self would be, you know, and and at the same time, everything's perfect as it is, everything's unfolding the way it needs mm-hmm. to unfold. But if there, you know, because you know, I I obviously needed to learn that lesson at some point in time, and uh, and 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 probably that's one of the things I was just like, you know, just just stay a little more quiet, Ken, <laughs> and listen. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That was great. Ken, this has been fantastic. I really like your energy, your positivity. I am very much of the mindset, pun intended, of, of you as well. Um, if people like what they heard from you today, where and how can they find and follow and get in touch with you? Absolutely. So um, they can either email me directly if they'd like to. They could do that at coachmenowken at gmail.com. Also, what I'd like to offer your listeners is a... Um, is a free consumer educational guide and they can go to successful entrepreneur now.com and they can opt in for a free uh, consumer educational guide, which is, um, is, is about entrepreneurship and it's, 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 it gives some really good pointers. We've touched on a few of them here, but, and it's just a, it's just a simple read. It's nothing, you know, but they can have it there available to themselves if they'd like to. And, on top of that as well, they could also go to, um, if they want more information about my program, The Inside Lane, uh, they can basically go to thesuccessfulentrepreneurnow.com and they can get more information there and they can see whether or not they believe they, they could apply to qualify for that program if it's something that interests them. If not, they can just have some really relevant information for them that they can start to use right away as well. Wonderful. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Ken. We appreciate your time. My absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot. Okay. Ciao. 